at the end of the day, what happens with price of anything is simple supply and demand economics. So, so let me ask you this question. You can either point, point up or down just as your answer. Um, is demand up or down compared to where it was a year ago? Up. There you go. Okay. Is supply up or down compared to where it was a year ago? Okay. Are prices going up or down as a result of that? There you go. Okay. So you all know the basics that underpin it. So, so the, the way to share this with the person who's not sure about what's going to happen, understand that the general public has this paradigm of what goes up must come down. And they don't know when, and they don't really understand the factors that drive it. And if they're old enough to remember 2009, 10, and 11, they're assuming that's going to happen again. And the biggest difference between that market and this market is there was speculative oversupply. So you had more houses than you had demand and therefore prices had to come down. Now, there were some other factors too around banking and subprime mortgages and all these other things. However, if you just go back to supply and demand. So how do you make sense of this? Uh, all you're going to do is look, watch what's going on in your market related to supply. So your indicator, like the canary in the coal mine on this is when you see days on market start to stretch. So in our listing skills course, Debbie did a brilliant job of explaining how she does this per price range and watching days on market and how that changes month over month in each price range. When you start to see days on market stretch, that's an indication that supply is starting to catch up. We're a long way from that. So the other thing you watch, and this is very market specific, is market specific demand. So here's some of the ways that you could look at that. There's some things that drive it. Uh, one would be, and we talked about this in the uh, business planning summit that, that Debbie and I did a couple of months back. I guess that was maybe October, November. Uh, migration. Are people moving to your area or out of your area? Most of you are in markets that people are moving to. That's demand. Uh, demographic waves. Are you in an area that's, that's mostly young people? who are entering their prime buying years. Uh, the millennial generation adjusted for migration is, uh, immigration is the largest demographic cohort ever. Even more than baby boomers, if you factor in immigration. They're in their peak buying years. The older millennials are move up buyers right now. The younger millennials are buying their first house. All of that's demand. So you've got migration, you've got demographics, you have the cost of money, which is very cheap, uh, and you have continued uh, monetary policy uh, and, and sort of the political scene that's juicing all of that. So you have this, this I don't want to say never ending because the music could stop at any point in time. So I always sort of lead into this when someone asks me, I say, well, my crystal ball's broken and it has been for a while. However, here are the factors that drive pricing. And then you know that at, at, at your local level of what's going on with supply. And then I'll give you one other thought on this and I'll move on because, you know, I can get worked up on this and I already have is uh, you can get a really good indicator of uh, of where your market is headed by looking at what's happening with new construction. You can get a really good indicator of of where your market's headed by reading uh, some of the reports of these national home builders because they're projecting things years into the future and they have people on their staff that's a lot smarter than me who can kind of figure all of that out. So I, I would encourage you to stay away from predicting, is it going to go up or down or is it a good time or should they or shouldn't they? And instead just, just know the data of your market really well and ultimately supply and demand drives the whole thing.